Welcome to Columbia Conversations. Today we have with us Dr. Girish, consultant nephrologist and transplant physician. Dr. Girish will be answering the queries on chronic kidney diseases and transplant. Welcome you, doctor. Thank you. So, doctor, what do you mean by chronic kidney disease and what are the causes? So, chronic kidney disease is a terminology used for irreversible kidney damage. This is often diagnosed with certain blood tests, urine tests, and ultrasound scans. If somebody has a suspicion of kidney disease, it is advisable that they visit their kidney doctor or general physician. So the common causes of chronic kidney disease or irreversible kidney damage throughout the world is number one, diabetes, number two, hypertension, number three, heart disease, number four, certain special kidney diseases in which the body recognizes our organs as foreign. It is often called as autoimmune illnesses and other causes of chronic kidney disease which are very important for us to know is certain medications such as painkillers, certain antibiotics can cause chronic kidney damage. Okay, doctor. What are the common symptoms of chronic kidney disease? See, chronic kidney disease is essentially divided into five stages. Stage 1, stage 2, stage 3, stage 4, stage 5. Stage 5 is when the kidney function is less than 15%. Both kidneys put together. Most of the stages, stage 1 to 4, they may not have, they may not have any symptoms. So it may be an incidental finding on a blood test, urine test or an ultrasound scan. Usually in stage 5 kidney disease, which is also called as the end-stage kidney disease, the symptoms are of fluid retention, meaning to say swelling in the legs, puffiness of the face, eyes, swollen hands, breathing difficulties, inability to lie flat, or it may be due to accumulation of waste products, which we call it as uremic symptoms. This manifests as nausea, vomiting, unable to eat food, loss of appetite, and loss of weight, and sometimes itching, rashes. These are all the possible features of chronic kidney disease. How can we prevent or reduce the risk of kidney problems? See, the chronic kidney disease is uh, generally a problem caused by a primary illness such as diabetes, hypertension, or heart disease. So the pivotal thing in prevention of chronic kidney disease is to control the underlying cause, such as control your diabetes, control your blood pressure, or get an appropriate treatment of the heart disease. Certain other ways of looking after your kidneys are to have a good diet and avoid certain medications which can harm the kidney. What are the treatment options for the end-stage kidney disease? So the term end-stage kidney disease applies to people who suffer from chronic kidney disease stage 5, which means both kidneys put together are working less than 15%. So in such people, we often offer them two or th three options. First being kidney transplant. Kidney transplantation is of two varieties. One is from a living kidney donor or from a cadaveric donor. Number two, dialysis. There are two types of dialysis, which is hemodialysis or peritoneal dialysis. Hemodialysis means blood cleaning process, which is usually a hospital-based dialysis done three times a week. Whereas peritoneal dialysis is through a tube put in the tummy and it's often done at home. And it is quite often as good as hemodialysis. The third option is conservative management when we try to manage the kidney disease with just symptoms. Can you give us some details about kidney transplant and what law has to say about it? Okay. See, kidney transplant is the best available treatment option for end-stage kidney disease. The reasons why it is called the best treatment is for two reasons. Number one, it improves the quality of life. Number two, it improves the longevity or the survival in end-stage kidney disease. Now, kidney transplantation can be of two types. One is from a living person 
Number two, from a cadaver. Uh, the law says, as far as the living donation is concerned, we are regulated by Human Organ Transplant Act. Uh, and the law clearly says that any person can donate to another person out of pure love, emotion, or affection. There should not be any monetary or any other materialistic gains exchanged between the parties. So it is, there is often a myth that kidney transplantation can happen only in related people. That is not necessarily the case. Can a wife donate her kidney to her husband with a different blood group? See, generally, as we all know, there are four different types of blood group. O, A, B, AB. So O is called the universal donor and AB is called the universal recipient. So if a person, if a donor is blood group O, he can donate his kidney to any of the four groups. If the blood group of an individual is AB, then he can receive kidney from any of the individuals. So generally, again, there are different types of uh, kidney transplants possible here. One is called the blood group compatible transplant when O gives to another O or A gives to another A or B gives to another B. Now, with the advances in the science and the technologies, we are able to cross these barriers and are able to do ABO incompatible transplants and swap transplants. So ABO incompatible transplants are transplants that are done against blood group. Let's say donor is blood group A and recipient is blood group B and the donor wants to donate to the recipient. Then the recipients get some treatment to remove the antibodies against A and then can proceed towards transplantation. Now this is called ABO incompatible transplants. Now the other way around is, let's say there are two pairs. One pair, donor is A and recipient is B. Another pair, donor is B and recipient is A. In such scenarios, the law permits us to do something called a swap transplant, which has been done in Columbasia. We have done about three such transplants. In fact, we have gone to an extent where we have been able to do the first inter-hospital swap transplants that is probably the first of its kind in South India. Are there a selection criteria for a living kidney donor? Yeah, for a living kidney donor, basically we uh, accept anybody above 18 years age. As far as the upper limit of the age is concerned, there is no cutoff as such, but 65 to 70 years is a gray area. Beyond 65 to 70 years, one has to take extreme cautions and work up the donor appropriately and seek the guidance of an expert nephrologist and a transplant physician to be able to proceed with the transplantation. Can you say more about do's and don'ts after a kidney transplant? Yeah, certainly. There are a number of do's and don'ts after uh, receiving a kidney transplant. See, the surgery itself is a very minor part of kidney transplant. The care that one uh, takes and receives forms a vital part of uh, the outcomes related to kidney transplants. So there are certain do's. The first do is maintain personal hygiene, have a good dietary habit, follow the instructions of your doctor very strictly, do not miss any medications. If you have any symptoms or any problems, report to the doctors immediately and also Try and avoid huge crowds. And in the first few months of kidney transplant, we suggest avoiding contact with patients who are at risk of infections. And certain don'ts after a kidney transplant is to try to miss medications. Certainly, this is something we don't advise. Secondly, to not have a set diet. Okay. Thirdly, to skip follow-ups and to avoid certain medications such as painkillers. All these are don'ts. Any doubts 
with regards to your care post transplant have a low threshold to interact with your doctor and speak it out are there some reasons why kidney transplant is not advised for some patients yes there are two factors one is the recipient factor and the second one is the donor factors the first recipient factor is if the patient is not medically fit or suitable as assessed by the their nephrologist then that would preclude a transplantation the second one is the donor factors at whatever stage if we find that the donor is not suitable to donate his organ then the first principle is do no harm so we would avoid such a person donating the kidney to the recipient how does a patient register for a cadaver donor so the cadaveric registration uh, is a, a centralized process which happens uh, through a non profit organization called jeeva sarthakate it has to go through individual hospitals for example in karnataka you are allowed to register only in one hospital so it is best to contact your nephrologist ask him details about the process and they will be able to guide you through it thank you doctor for being part of the columbia conversation it was a very informative session my pleasure thank you thank you